This week on our farm in Portugal, we've got some big jobs to do before something unexpected happens. And we leave the farm. We're taking a bit of a shopping trip after stumbling across some classic newbie bargain flights. And we're off to Morocco to see if we can gather some inspiration and treasures to bring back to become part of newbie life here in Portugal. Travellers at heart, it feels great to be back on the road, but believe us when we say this is the most reluctant leaving of a home we've ever done. I think it's going to be fun. Go finish the gate when you get back. <laughs> That's true. We are the newbies, John, Tara and Crusoe, and we've been living an extraordinary life, committed to making our minutes and seconds count. For the last two years, we've been living in vans and travelling the world. Something's just happened. I think, I could be wrong, but I think this Crusoe has already been to 23 countries on four continents. We have fed giraffe, faced down elephants, kayaked with humpbacks, and played with meerkats. We've taken some of the world's greatest hikes, visited the world's greatest cities, and seen some of nature's greatest spectacles. We even got married by a penguin, but that's another story. Now it's time for our biggest challenge yet, We've bought an abandoned farm in northern Portugal and our mission is to turn the overgrown wreck into an off-grid sustainable place that we can call home. Join us and follow our journey. Be brave, think big, explore. Busy day today, my darling. It is indeed. We have a lot to do. We do. I am going to go and paint. My love, day. stop. Those jeans, I think it's time. What? I think it's time they go. Turn around. No, turn around. Crusoe's on my side, no matter what happens, he's on my, you're on my side, aren't you, Crusoe? Yeah. yeah see? Crusoe, does daddy need to retire those jeans? Yeah. Yeah. No. My love, Crusoe could fit through that hole. Okay, so first job today. New work jeans. New work jeans. <laughs> today, I think I'm gonna do some painting, paint the front gates and then paint the side of the building. Also, we have an Ikea <laughs> delivery coming today. Crusoe, go and get your working jeans on. While John's getting cracking with the painting, I have the enviable task of going to town with Crusoe. Good stories, buddy. To go and do the laundry. <laughs> I then have to come back, empty the fridge, and make use of all of the lemons we've got left over. I've got some ideas, and I think maybe today's a day for keeping things simple. We're also expecting an IKEA delivery, but I'm not convinced it's gonna make it because how on earth is IKEA ever gonna find us here? And all of this has to happen today because tomorrow we're going shopping in Morocco. Yeah, it's come along, hasn't it? It makes such a difference, doesn't it? It does, yeah, it really yeah. does. Fiddly doing these little gap things, but anyway. Yeah, it, um, yeah. what do they say? It pops. It pops. Oh, it's a big moment. Should we come and have a look? Right, so everybody, this is the bedroom in the big house. If you haven't watched the full tour of our farm, you haven't seen this yet, but if you have, then it's probably quite familiar. But this is where we're moving into because it's got way more space. And the most important thing is this bathroom is so much nicer. And once we get the shower working, because currently there's no hot water in here, we will have a proper shower and I won't have to squat on the bottom of a shower cubicle. So. There's big reasons to move in here. And we've got a balcony. And there's a balcony. Ta -da. Ta -da. Okay, so what's your job in here, love? I think we've got to fill those cracks. Yeah. So it looks like somebody's tried to fill in the gaps here. Um, and then we'll paint, ceiling, walls. Good. Yep. So when we moved into this place, we were absolutely blessed. 
in that two of the buildings on this property out of the three are sort of habitable. Fairly easy to imagine just kind of moving straight in and getting into bed and using the bathrooms. This bathroom in this building here, a lot nicer than the other bathroom in the other building. It's a bit bigger, it's a bit more space. Um, I fitted a new cistern over there so the toilet doesn't leak anymore. Um, and as soon as we've got the hot water working, quids in. It's going to be very, very comfortable um, small house to live in. Of course, that doesn't mean that it's the finished item. We've got so many ideas for this building in particular um, and the one out there below us. That one down there is completely derelict and I think ultimately it will become our actual home, the, the place where we all want to hang out. But for now, we want to make this room a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more cozy so that when we are in here in a, in a couple of weeks time, three weeks time, we enjoy walking through the door um, and we enjoy uh, um, sleeping in here. So first things first, I'm just looking at these cracks on the walls here. Some of them are really, really small. What does that mean? Well, it means that probably just by painting, we're going to cover some of those gaps. Some of them, on the other hand, up there in the corner, for example, next to the window, a little bit bigger, not looking so good. First thing I'm going to do is have a paint and have a look. My next job is to get everything out of the fridge and packed away for us to be away. So first things first is these lemons. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had an overdose of lemons and you all had so many amazing suggestions for things I could do with them. I am going to use these ones to make some lemon ice blocks, which is the simplest solution, but sounds delicious. And I had grand ambitions to use the rind from the lemons I've used over the last weeks to make some cleaning detergent, but I forgot to buy vinegar this morning, so it's not gonna work this time. Right, that's it. Nearly all the lemons are juiced. That's a whole massive jug. I hope I brought enough ice drinks. I now see how I should prepare the rinds when I make our detergent, because I've just been squeezing them with my hand and then thinking, oh gosh, it's going to be a bit of a faff to get the flesh out to get like clean skins or um, soaking in the vinegar for the detergent. But check out how clean this gets the skins. This is how to do it. Unfortunately, these are going to be destined for compost because like I said, no vinegar. But next time, I now know what I'm doing. That being said, I have just remembered somebody else had a really great idea to grate the lemon zest and dry it to be sprinkled on salads, in cooking, and all sorts of wonderful things. I am super pleased with this outcome. Something I did yesterday. While we're in the freezer. Was froze a whole bunch of this spinach because we weren't gonna be here to use it. I literally just put the leaves into these bags and look how beautifully they've frozen. They're all, it's all loose. That's gonna be perfect. I wasn't expecting that. Anybody who has ever picked up a paintbrush before will know that not all paints are the same. The cheaper the paint, often the more water it's got in it, the runnier it is, and the more coats of paint you've got to put on. I'm only saying this because the paint that I'm using at the moment seems to be covering up those hairline cracks really quite nicely. They're gone completely, which means that I don't have to fill. If you're in Portugal and you ever come across this brand, that's the one, it's done the job well. Tara's phone's just rang, that could be Ikea. Is it Ikea, darling? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. They're coming. No. They're going to be here in an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. Bye, thank you, bye. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently in half an hour, our sofa's arriving and it's going to come in this room. We're going to make this into our living room. We haven't had an inside living room at all since we got here. And we've had some quite cold and quite rainy evenings, really. And I'm looking forward to having a space inside that's kind of cozy and comfortable that we can curl up in should we need to be inside. 
obviously the preference is always to be outside, but every now and then it's nice to be inside. So I'm going to move everything that's over there into the kitchen, which is a complete state. As John said, the walls are really bad. They've kind of been stained with smoke. I think they need to be completely stripped, as John said, probably replastered. And um, we're definitely gonna render over the tiles in there as well. So it's a big job in that room. But for now, it can just act as a bit of a storeroom while we set this up as a little living room. Right, so this room is now empty and ready for the arrival of the sofas. Just by the van. Boys are off to go and welcome Ikea. Right, boys have gone to the shops um, and to empty our dustbins before we head off tomorrow. So it's up to me. Got me feeling quite ambitious and thinking, imagine I could have it built before the boys get back. it's time to pack it. We also are going with absolutely no check-in luggage for the three of us. We have a 10 kilo cabin bag and three small cabin bags. So I got to try and make that work. Well, this is a first. That bag is so empty, it's just fallen over. I am genuinely concerned at how little I've packed. That's because she wants to fill it with shopping. <laughs> is that it, is it? That's it. Excellent, just like the old days. Love it, well done. Come on then, we gotta go. <laughs> Let's go, country number 24, Crusoe. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty exciting. Cruiser's like, hang on a minute, I haven't even had my breakfast. I don't want to go. I don't want to go either. I think it's going to be fun though, eh? I think it's going to be fun. Go finish the gate when you get back. This is the first time I think ever in my whole entire life that I've been more than a few days without looking at Skyscanner and checking flights. And it's been what, like six weeks? Yeah. It's the first time I've ever got in the car to go to the airport and thought, nah, you know, actually, I could be doing something else. Twenty-four. Well done, yeah. you. Hey. Come on then. Are you in the water? Are, are you the last person off the aeroplane? Just about. Just about. Couldn't wake him up. <laughs> Come on. There we go. We've arrived in Morocco. I, for one, am very excited. This is Crusoe's twenty-fourth country. Can you believe that? 
Wow. And, and it's a new country for Tara too. Really, I'm so excited. Do you know, as reluctant as I was to leave the farm, it already feels amazing to be back on the road. We love traveling. We'll never not love traveling. So any excuse to get out there, we'll take it. John, you are a brave man. <laughs> yeah, well, there'll be a lot of inspiration here, that's for sure. Look at those carpets, I love it. John and I have always used our travels as springboards for inspiration. So when we stumbled upon those mega deal flights to Morocco, it felt like a great opportunity to see somewhere new, a place renowned for its beauty and creativity. You'll see what we mean in the next couple of minutes. There is so much color, ingenuity, and texture to life in the riads and souks of Marrakesh. And we were excited to see what would spark our imaginations that we could bring home for life on the farm. So, one of the first purchases for the house. We reckon we need fancy numbers for our gate. You bet we do. And they are, what, five euros each? Five euros each. Check they're that. lovely. Love it. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Okay, let's go pay. Okay. Just wandered into a side shop off the tourist drag a little bit. It's a busy, busy street out there. Um, these guys are actually building stuff in their, in their backyard, I suppose it is. Some beautiful antiques in here. And um, when we picked up this lamp. Excited about that. I'm not gonna, we're not going to tell anybody how much we pay for stuff because I know if we say that cost us 500 euros, which it didn't, which but it didn't, you know, somebody somebody out there is going to be like, that's outrageously expensive. And if we say it costs us five euros, somebody out there is going to say, that's just not enough. You're horrible <laughs> people, you're cheating. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much. It's a big moment. <laughs> yeah, it's a real struggle to find something that's the right price in Marrakesh, but I think we've done it with the I tiles, right? I think we've right? done it with these tiles, yeah, we're yeah. really pleased with them. Before anybody shouts at us about not buying the tiles of Portugal, we have lots of plans to buy loads of tiles of Portugal, but we also want these from Morocco because they are really special and they're very, very beautiful. So Quite colourful. We will get Portuguese tiles, I promise. Mm. But for now, these are going to go on the table. I think we should take maybe more than 20 because actually, we're going to want to put them in between some terracotta tiles at some point as well. We did it. Good job, that darling. That was a mission we had, wasn't it? We've done it. Yeah. Okay, where should we go now? I think we've got to go home, haven't we? Yeah, I'm, I'm knackered. knackered. So that way. Okay, let's go. So peaceful, isn't it? Mm, it's beautiful. beautiful. We had already had two days wandering the souk of Marrakesh and to retreat to this beautiful Riyadh at the end of the day was pure bliss. This is Riyadh Lausia and it gave us so much inspiration. For example, imagine this beautiful plaster mold work around the balcony of our biggest house. We can't wait to give that a go. We'd highly recommend this Riyadh if you're heading in this direction. It's in an amazing location in the heart of the Medina and we couldn't fault it especially because of the amazing team led by Yasin who helped us with so much so, during our stay not to mention the next mission Crusoe. on the cards carpets Crusoe where are you little man come on we got to get ready where are we going to go are we going to go and get some carpets yeah yeah let's do that Come 
How do you know you've got the right one? And in my dream world, we have these white, very like chic boho type uh -huh. carpets. But um, Crusoe will love that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. decided we're keeping the blue pink carpet um, for a little bit later for debate. Chris has come out for a little bit of a break. What are you doing Crusoe? Should we go back in? Carry on with the work? Yeah? Come on then. No don't touch that. Straight in. No don't touch that either. smaller carpets are easier to be busy. All right, we've got, how many have we picked? So we've picked 10 or 12 um, different carpets of different sizes and now we're going to have a quick look at the prices and see how we get along, um, fingers crossed. But there are some really nice ones in there, I quite like some. So these simple ones in the corner I quite like. That's that's definitely my favourite hectic one. That one, on the, that one on the edge, yeah. yeah. The green one, I think we can just get rid of, huh? So is Tara's preferring yeah. this one, mm -hmm. yeah, over this one, mm -hmm. which are fairly, but they're both fairly similar carpets. What about this middle one? I like that a lot. Really? Yeah. You don't like it at all, though, do you? I mean, it do looks like something that think? belongs to Warwick Castle. So we won't bore you with the choosing process, except to say Crusoe made his choice. Carpet shopping in Marrakesh is certainly an experience. The prices are eye-watering to start, but they do drop significantly depending on your bargaining skills. We chose one beautiful rug to be part of our home, but any more than that was definitely out of budget. Little did we know, we had a carpet treat in store for us on our next stop in Morocco, care of a very kindly man in a village on the side of a hill. But more on that in a moment. Hello, my love. Right. How are we doing? Yep, got the uh, readies. Good. So we, uh, have we got it all wrapped up? Is it all good to go? All good to go. Excellent, okay. There it is on the floor. It's Brilliant. Good. I think Crusoe's ready for something to eat. Yeah. Aren't you, little man? We ready? Yeah. <laughs>
We spent our last afternoon collecting just a few more bits before it was time for a bit of adventure, with a very short but sweet visit to the ancient village of Advan Hebdal. Crusoe's just made a purchase. What are you doing behind the wheel? We are off to a place called Eben Hebdal, if I've said that correctly. It's been a movie set for a whole bunch <laughs> of different movies, um, including, I believe, The Gladiator. It's about a three and a half hour drive from Marrakesh. We've hired a car and now all we've got to do is find our way out of Marrakesh to be fun. So we just came around the corner. Crusoe was starting to get a little bit cross. So we've stopped in this little village on the side of the road um, to get Crusoe some pears and apples. We managed to find him two pears. He's got one in each hand at the moment. And Tara has found a carpet shop. She's currently shopping in it. How's the pears, Crusoe? Yum, yum? Yeah, of course, delicious. We got another carpet, darling. Did we? Yes. <laughs> right. We were so thrilled with this find that we stopped on our way back two days later to get some more rugs from the kindest man we met in Morocco. We'll show you more when they're all unpacked and in place. Back on the farm next week. You ready, Crusoe? You ready? Are you going to be a gladiator this afternoon? I think that's definitely yes. Ad Ben Hebdal is a historic fortified village along the former caravan route between the Sahara and Marrakesh. It is considered a great example of Moroccan earth and clay architecture and has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1987. It's probably most recognisable thanks to movies like Gladiator and of course the recent series of Game of Thrones. And in fact it's all thanks to Hollywood that the place is so well preserved. Many similar places are sadly crumbling into the desert. We only had a very short time here, but it was beautiful. And before we knew it, it was time for us to head home at last. That's it. We are back in Portugal. We've just touched down, um, back from Marrakesh, back from Morocco. Lovely little trip. Um, nice way to spend a week, definitely. And we've bought a whole bunch of stuff. I am so excited to unpack it all, to start mm. getting it all into place, to put the tiles in the table. Yeah, um, I'm, I can't wait to get home and just have a look at the farm and see what's been growing without us. Yeah, um, we've, so we've been out of Portugal while there's been a massive heat wave. So it's yeah. been, I think, 36, 40, between 36 and 40 degrees most days while we've been away. Our wonderful friend Lida has been popping in to water our garden. Yeah. The last message I got from her said that the pressure had dropped on our water for some reason. So mm. are we going back to more water problems? Come on, man, surely not. <laughs> are um, we going back to completely dead flower beds? There's so much to think about, but I, I, I just can't wait to be home. So I can't wait. We're about 15 minutes away. We're just stopping up to get some groceries and we'll be back. Yeah. And I think it's probably time we say goodbye. Yeah, we absolutely. See you next week. Remember, like, subscribe, Join us on Patreon and Instagram if yeah. you uh, if, if you, you fancy. Like. Yeah. yeah. Um, leave us a comment. Uh, please. Your, yeah, please do. If you've got any ideas, suggestions for us, or ideas from what you've seen um, from what we've purchased, just uh, drop us a comment. Let us know. Um, we love hearing from you. It's fantastic. Otherwise, have a great week, and we'll see you on Sunday. Yeah, lots to look forward to.